Welcome to 4.3, uh, trigonometric ratios, trig ratios. Uh, let me just get my pen going over here. So um, recall here, so this is again uh, the unit circle. And so again, this is, has a radius of 1. And here is any point P. Uh, theta is the arc length. So theta is the amount of this arc length here. So we could say P of theta uh, is going to equal some ordered pair x comma y. Um, we can calculate the sine cos and tan. Oh, I'm not doing too well with my lines today. We can calculate the sine cos and the tan from this. Uh, if p, th p of theta has an x and a y coordinate, the x coordinate would be the same thing as the length of this piece here, and the y coordinate would be this length here or this side of the triangle over there. And uh, yeah, just a quick reminder that I did when I drew that uh, angle, I did draw it as uh, f to the first to the x-axis. So whenever we have an angle that we're going to draw and make a triangle out of it, we draw a line straight down to the x-axis. We call that a bowtie angle. Um, if we're going to find out the trig ratios, uh, so ka toa is the way we've gone in the past. Uh, sine of theta is equal to y over 1. So here is my angle theta. So theta has two meanings, doesn't it? It has this angle and this arc. Um, the sine of theta is equal to the opposite over hypotenuse. So that's y over 1. Uh, the cos of theta is going to be equal to x over 1. And the tan of theta is going to be equal to y over x opposite over adjacent. So we get that sine of theta over cos of theta. OK, so that's a bit of review. Uh, what's new here is the, the three reciprocal functions. So the reciprocal of sine is equal to cosecant. And by the reciprocal, what we mean is you can either say 1 over that value. So instead of y, we get 1 over y. Uh, but also, remember, let's say that in this case the sine of y was equal to, uh, what's a common one, say root 2 over 2, uh, then we can take or 1 over root 2, right? Remember those mean the same thing. The reciprocal in this case would be the same thing as 2 over root 2 or just root 2. Remember that those actually are identical values. So the reciprocal of sine is cosecant. This reciprocal of cos is secant. So I'm not sure the best way to think about this. Uh, this the first letter changes, maybe. When you do the reciprocal, that s never stays the same. So the reciprocal of sine is not secant. The reciprocal of sine is cosecant. Just a couple of new words to learn. The reciprocal of cos, same idea, is going to be 1 over cos. Or if in this case, if it's the x value, now it becomes 1 over x the reciprocal of tan is cotan and here where we got this from opposite over adjacent or y over x now it becomes x over y another way of thinking about tan is you can also say it's the same thing as the sine of theta over the cos of theta uh, the y over the x and here again we can just do the reciprocal of that right just flip that over so instead of y over x x over y uh, another thing i would like you to put in your notes here is about uh, which quadrant these values are going to be positive or negative okay so i'm going to make a little bit of space just in the middle here and i'll zoom in once um, so our sine values are the y so um, in which quadrants are is sine positive and which quadrants is sine negative? Well, here is our y-axis, and sine and y are positive in quadrants number 1 and 2, and they're negative over here, right? So if we put them in Roman numerals, 1, 2, 3, and 4, that's how it works out. Okay, how about cos? So cos will be positive when x is positive, so positive in 1 and 4, negative in 2 and 3. Now what about tan? So you recall that tan is equal to y over x. So in quadrant 1, sine is positive, cos is positive. So positive divided by positive is positive. Okay. I'm going to switch all over to quadrant 3 here, where y is negative and x is negative, so negative divided by negative is also positive. So you see this pattern of across from each other, tan is positive. 
Uh, in quadrant number two, sine is positive, but cos is negative, so a positive divided by negative gives you negative, and so on for the last one. So um, watch out for this pattern. You'll notice that we'll be using it on the next side. Now, whatever is true about sine in terms of positive negatives is also true for cosecant, right? Because when you do the reciprocal, it doesn't change the sign. 1 over 4, 4 over 1, they're both positive. Uh, likewise, cos and secant, same pattern for which quadrant and same pattern for cotangent. So cotangent is positive in quadrant 1, positive in quadrant 3, but negative in 2 and 4. Okay. Um, that's all for that notes for that page and let's start with our example one on the next page here it says the point 513 and negative 1213 lie on the terminal arm of an angle theta in standard position and we should draw a diagram to represent this situation here so okay now I'm pretty sure that they're giving this uh, a relatively straightforward version of this question and I think that these two lie on the unit circle so I'm just but I'm curious here let's just is is this point is the point on the unit circle just even before I'm starting I'm gonna ask myself that question so how do we figure that out well you remember that uh, x squared plus y squared is equal to 1 so if this is the x value and this is the y value if it does and if it does indeed lie on the unit circle then this would be a true statement so let's just check this out 5 over 13 squared plus negative 12 over 13 squared is this equal to 1 right so 5 squared is 25 uh, over 13 squared is 169 plus oh, 144 that becomes positive over 169 is that equal to 1 uh, 25 plus 144 yes is 169 so it's true so this it does lie on the unit circle so I've got a nice normal unit circle here X is positive Y is negative so it's going to be down here a little bit right so I'll put my point P right over there there is the point that we're talking about and that's all we need to do for the draw, draw the diagram I'll even go like this 5 over 13 comma negative 12 over 13 okay so that's good for part A part uh, B says find all six trig ratios for theta um, if we start off and just make it clear in our minds what X is it's 5 over 13 and y is equal to negative 12 over 13. Now if you have to peek back at the last uh, question that's fine but the the six trig ratios are cos of theta and there's sine of theta then we're going to do tan of theta and now if you can recall the reciprocal functions that we just learned it's going to be secant theta is a reciprocal of cos cosecant theta and then cotan theta all right, so the cos theta function is just merely our x, so it's going to be 5 over 13. Uh, and the sine function is going to be negative 12 over 13. And my sine function is equal to y over x. So y over x is going to be equal to negative 12 over 5. Okay, I'm kind of squishing that in a little bit there. Now our reciprocal function, since these are all in fraction form, I'm just going to pause and ask my wife to do the dishes a little bit later so I can concentrate. Thank you. The secant function is the reciprocal, so I say 13 over 5. And the cosecant function is equal to negative 13 over 12. It's just that same fraction and it's the reciprocal form. And then the cotan is equal to negative 5 over 12. Okay, so there we got all our answers. I hope you can read that okay. Uh, example number two is, here's a point that lies on the terminal arm of an angle theta in standard position. Again, we're going to draw a diagram to represent this situation. So here we go. Uh, at which quadrant is it in? So it's the x value is negative, the y value is positive. So that means it's going to be in quadrant number two. So we'll say negative three fifths and four fifths. We'll put it kind of up over there. Oh. So there is my point P over there. Uh, I think that's enough to figure it out. Maybe I'll put in an 
just write down the ordered pair over there as well. Find all trig ratios. So x is going to be equal to negative 3 fifths, y is equal to 4 fifths, and to do all six trig functions it's the same idea again. So I'm just going to write cos theta is going to be equal to my x value, negative 3 over 5. The sine of theta will be equal to my y value, 4 over 5. My tan theta is going to be equal to the y over the x, so it's negative 4 over 3. Let's just stop a second and just see, does that conform with what we were talking about a second ago with tan being negative and positive in which quadrants? Remember, we had said that tan is positive here, positive here, negative and negative. So it does work, right, because it's in the second quadrant, so tan is negative, that's kind of nice. Now we have secant theta is equal to negative 5 over 3, so you just do the reciprocal of that function. Uh, cosecant theta is equal to 5 over 4, and then our last one here is cotan of theta is equal to negative 3 over 4. So fairly straightforward. I hope you're just cruising through these questions. And that's all we have for this little mini lesson.